this will be your first time being alone together. You've never been alone together do, ever. Do like khalwa has never happened before. Well, like, it's shocking. A person wonders why his marriage is so bad. It's so evil. There's so much problems. Like, from the beginning, these sunnah are here to avoid a lot of corruption and chaos that will come many years down the line. So you have to have a plan. You know what I'm saying? Like make sure the night don't get boring. And most likely, what will happen is most likely, Akhi, it will naturally like she'll feel so comfortable. It will just lead to intimacy, bro. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah. Amma ba'd. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Brothers and sisters, welcome back to yet another episode of Relationship Goals. Um, I'll be honest, in the beginning, I didn't really think we'd we'd come this far, but I think this this will be the twentieth episode, right? Alhamdulillah. Or maybe nineteenth episode. I don't know. We'll see in it. Alhamdulillah. We come come somewhere. Alhamdulillah. Um, I think Are you guys learning? A, there's been an arc ha ha happening. Hopefully. Do you guys actually feel like you're learning? That's quite uh, pivotal. If you guys could let us know in the comments. Yeah, if, uh, right now, if you could stop in the comment, tell me. Like, don't say to me you're enjoying it. I don't want to know if the series is entertaining for you. Mm. I want to. Are you actually learning? And I like actually, mention some old things you mentioned. You learned from old episodes. Yeah, have like, you done? Have you used any of this that, stuff? Etc. I've had a few brothers message me. I had a marriage meeting. You said this, 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 this. Yeah. So like, I get really motivated. This impacted when I know people me this way. Impacted this me that way. Yeah, of course. Like, like, did you go to a marriage meeting and it and it worked and you based on some stuff that you learned, or did you decide to call it off based on some stuff that you learned here? Mm -hmm, like, mm -hmm. what happened? Very important, very important. And your marriage got better yet? And his marriage got worse? Yeah, no, I mean, I, ho I hope know. so. Um, uh, we're not the worst part, but the better part. Please uh, let us know um, if you've implemented anything and it changed something for you. The official Sunna Match podcast, as we mentioned every episode, if you guys don't know, I'll mention it to you again. Sunna Match is our halal 100%, everything serious, no games, no funny business uh, matchmaking service where you can find the right one in the right way. Uh, Sunamash has been growing progressively over the last year or so and we've um, expanded to different countries in the world. Initially we started off as just UK and then we went to UK, US, Canada. Then we were like no we need Europe so we reached out to Europe or through some of the Scandinavian countries and some of the other countries. Hopefully by the time you guys watch this we will have reached out to Australia and New Zealand. and very, like we, Sunamash is global now alhamdulillah. We alhamdulillah mentioned it before but um you know breaking down borders brothers are traveling across the world for marriage meetings it's crazy honestly it's absolutely um for me anyway definitely it's, it's quite surreal to understand and see how people are really coming together on cinema it's, it's beautiful alhamdulillah um so yeah if you want to find the right one the right way inshallah they're going to be on cinema match so today's episode is going to be about the first night so what what is the you know the implications of the first night a lot of people have a lot of expectation some people got anxiety whether it's performance related or otherwise irrelevant but they got anxiety and they <laughs> want to know what's going on you know how, how do i how do i figure out the situation because obviously first means you've never done it before so you know please let's talk about and i'm assuming but the reason why i want to do this because there's ahkam i'm assuming related per, pertaining to it there's you know stuff from the, the sunnah and the quran uh, pertaining to it so please do not hesitate Tell us, no, let us know what does the first night mean? What does it mean to others? You know, Alhamdulillah, was salatu was salamu ala rasulillah, amma bad, Rabbi Shrahli, Sadri, way, silly, amri, wahlu, rocked at a millisani of Kauri. Assalamu alaikum rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. So, inshallah, this episode we're going to talk about the all important first night uh, when a husband and wife. Are together after after the nikah and um the reason i want to mention it is because as you mentioned there are a lot of anxieties involved but there are a lot of also like legislated adab mm -hmm. manners and etiquettes that are involved of how a man should receive his wife on the first night you see um most men have one thing in mind and that is that you know intimacy mm -hmm. and most women probably have one thing in mind which is Anxiety, stress, and Maybe. of course, sometimes it's the other way around as yeah, well. Um, sometimes but, but it's variables, you know. Yeah. I, I literally the way you're saying it. Maybe we should make the stakes clear. You know, the girl has just now recently, like probably just exact that exact day, left her house. You know, her family have let her go. It's probably really emotional. Yeah, People are probably emotional. crying. Um, and the 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 guy probably similarly maybe it's his first time leaving mm -hmm. his house. You know, he's he's got his own yard now. You know, it's it's, it's well, their hotel room. It's, maybe even that works as well. Yeah. But I'm, the point I'm making is, is is there's a lot of we we've there's been a lot of um storytelling. Like it's it's built it's been building up to this point. Yeah. You know, yeah. Yeah. this is so naturally people are imagining you yeah. know there should be some sort of um sparks. Yeah, like there should be something exciting, like fireworks at the yeah. end. You know what I mean? Yeah. So please, 
So, there's a hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when he um, married Aisha radiyallahu anha and from here we learn the etiquette of how a man should receive his wife. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam brought her a gift and he brought her, it was a drink, it was milk. And, uh, you know, Pakistanis, they have this tradition. I think the only thing a lot of them realize is from the sunnah. Is in the, the milk thing? <laughs> yeah, oh, okay. The Prophet he brought it for her. Mm. And some milk, he drank from it, and then he gave it to her. Mm. The scholars took some fawaits from this. They said, uh, it is very tender and mm. very nice. And it's a nice, like, the point is that you have to make the person feel comfortable, make them feel relaxed. You know what I'm saying? The, the, the girls come to you, she's gonna obviously be nervous, anxiety is very shy as well. You know what I'm saying? I know for a lot of men, intimacy is, is especially for a guy who's made this stuff chased his whole I mean, even for a guy who hasn't been chased his whole life and he's made Toba, even him, he's roasting, he's dying. So, like, bro, don't worry. I know everyone, like, everyone knows what you're on. Does that make sense? And what you want right now is, is clear. You have to tell no one. Everyone knows. Okay. This is <laughs> that you have to tell no one. Yeah, this this leading up to what like is that. about to hopefully in your mind you think is gonna be the happiest moment of your existence. Don't worry, it's all known. So the point I'm making is is that that's what you're on, but you have to really understand that that's not what she's on most likely right now. As you mentioned, there's a lot going through our mind. Um, I don't know about other cultures, but if you're marrying a Pakistani girl, hundred percent, the fact that you just took her home. You just did something that they call a ruksati, mm. which means that her whole and if she's, she's Bengali, Pakistani, or Indian. Left the house now. What, what it just means is that you just left her, mm. or you're going to leave with her, mm -hmm. and her family has erupted into volcanic tears. <laughs> volcanic tears. Yeah. <laughs> and obviously the levels. As in, if there's if there's a dad who never cries, there's a chance. It's it's the, probably he's gonna, oh, he's on, gonna his, on his daughter's wedding. Oh, that's the day he's gonna, gonna cry. cry. Yeah. I mean, some cultures cry more than other. Within some mm -hmm. cultures, they differ. Mm -hmm. I've been to some weddings where the crying is hysterical, and it's like embarrassing. I've been to others where it's respectable, but I've never been except there's been tears. Oh, so all crying is like this is a qaid it's wajib, like it's got to happen. If well, it hasn't happened yet, this isn't. I a real was wedding. at one wedding, you know. I was at one <clears> wedding <throat> where no one was crying to be okay. strong. Okay. And the bride turned back and said, "Are you guys not gonna cry?" <laughs> <laughs> she she took it as she took it as like an insult. As like, like how do you, you don't, don't care about me? Like you know, I'm just going. <laughs> I'm, I'm just leaving. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> you guys are gonna cry at least for me. Well, I was mahram to the girl. That's why oh, okay, I was there okay. in case anyone's okay. thinking. No, no, you were free mixing at the wedding. No, no, evident. <laughs> I was, I was, I was a mahram in that situation. But the point is that the head didn't will get. Lo and behold, yeah, yeah. everyone's like crying. Yeah, there's one wedding where everyone was trying to firm it, and. um what do you call it? Uh, my was the only wedding when no one cried. When no one cried. And I'll tell you why. Go on. That's the only one I've seen that no one cried. And I'll tell you why. But basically, coming back to this wedding, yeah. Everyone was trying to hold it back. And there was one youth that was there. Okay. The youth started crying. Wow. That one, one, one like family nephew youth kind of thing. Mm. He was... As far as, as, far as the family's <laughs> yeah. concerned. He was just it, a yeah? kid. He was just a kid. Yeah, he was just there. <laughs> okay. He started crying. And then, yeah. uh, and that was the uh, gateway. That was the gateway to you. And uh, mine, all of a sudden, was, ta -ta 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 -ta, mine, mine, tears mine, mine was bullets. genius. I'll be honest. I'll be honest. If you want to have a good night, bro, as in when I say good night, I don't mean that. Like, as in, as in, because mm. you you have to understand when she leaves crying, mm. that mental there's aftercare that's required. Yeah, that's yeah. after serious yeah. aftercare. Yeah, so just let you know now your first night's gone. <laughs> oh, okay. I'm just, the basis what I'm trying oh, to tell you. Your first night's gone. Well, damn. Yeah, if you're married to Pakistani girl, most likely your first night's gone. But you, just trust me, you ain't getting none. It's more about she's gonna talk about her family, what they mean to you, and yeah. and, and you're gonna say, listen, oh, tomorrow man. morning we're gonna see them again. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah you, the, you are, you are, <laughs> but and but they don't get it. And <laughs> the thing is, when you show them that you see them the next morning, yeah. my advice is always take her the next morning. Oh, okay. Take her, take her oh. the next morning. You know why? I was planning on flying away and never no. seeing them again. Take her. The <laughs> <laughs> no, take her the next morning. You know why? Because suddenly she'll realize how all of the anxieties and stresses and fears that she had the night before it was all in the mind. It was all in the mind. It was all in the mind. And then hopefully, inshallah, the next night she can be relaxed to know mm. that 
Oh, my I would have to see my family another day. Yeah. <laughs> no, trust me, because there was too much Bollywood, didn't it? Where they think that that's it, they've lost their family now. He said I would live. So yeah, so so come back to my wedding. That's what happened, yeah. So was it was it as we mentioned previously? One of my was it a sting members, operation? So you like, wanted to make sure yeah, no one cried. Was, so you set it up I like didn't that. even know. I oh, wasn't you. Oh, but okay. but one of my family members did it. Yeah. Okay. And I can't lie, it was genius. Okay. And, and I advise right. you to do this, isn't it? If you oh, want okay. to. Well, damn. If you if you're marrying, I don't know if the Afghans do this, but I know the Bengalis, Pakistanis, and I'm assuming the Indians they do it because mm. Indians kind of sim yeah. similar. Yeah. But I, I seen the Bengalis, I seen the Pakistanis, they all do it. Yeah. I'm assuming the Indians were. So check what he did. Yeah. This is one of his family members. So as we're going, and at the moment that the eyes start swelling up, all I hear is ta 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 ta. I'm thinking, yo, what happened? <laughs> Taliban, yeah. what's going on? We look up, fireworks. Oh, okay. Bro, it was that smart. It was yeah. a majestic fireworks display. Wow. Like it was serious, and it mm. suddenly it was so funny. Yeah, I saw everyone go from uh, to oh, wow. Wow. <laughs> literally, it was more, it, they went from. Oh wow, that's so pretty! And then everyone was happy. Everyone was so happy. Yeah, they were like, and we, "Get out of here!" And as we, and we jumped, <laughs> we're in, happy. Get we jumped into the whip, and we left. And everyone was still like, "Oh, yeah. where the sparklers? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh wait, where are they going? Dip." <laughs> so the, the the point of the matter is that that's our culture. But I, I heard in Somali culture, it's a celebration. Mm. Yo, it's mm. going happy. Like, she's yeah. happy to go and mm. everything. The point is that you have to understand. Yeah, it's not that she's up because a lot of guys was full. Uh, the Pakistani dons. The Asian ones, they will feel like, Rod, are you not happy you want to be with me? It's not mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. It's just that psychologically, the way someone leaves has an impact on them. You know what I'm saying? If she just seen everyone crying, everyone's hugging her, everyone, and some family members are hysterical, like to the point where it's embarrassing. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, <clears throat> she's she's got a board, what they call a borge on her heart. Yeah. What, 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 what burden. It? Huh? burden. Yeah, burden. Yeah. She's got this burden, you know what I'm saying? And it's like, um, and it's like, Obviously now you got like I said aftercare yeah, in it. Yeah. So, bro, uh, you know what the thing is? It's so awkward as well. I, I personally I find it re the reason why I find it awkward is because not everyone there is like the girl's close family member. There's like external family, and by nature the weddings are like they got next man there. So yeah. it's like next people start crying, and she's got to go up to him and be like, "Don't worry." I'm well, I haven't seen it because most you know, of the weddings so, I've been to, yeah, so it's, it's more like it's only it's only. Yeah. The people who had a family at the end mm. that remained for the rock city. Oh, okay. It's usually okay. Like, like segregated halls. Mm. And then, like, the the only guys that are there are Mahams and it's the girl and, mm. and the girls. Mm. Everyone's left. It's just the immediate family. But I, I know what you mean. It does yeah. happen. Like, there's a lot no, of I, I, no, not, not just that, but I'm saying once everyone starts crying, it's like, does she wait for everyone to stop crying? Yeah. Or does she, like, ride away into the sunset with people still crying in yeah. the background? And, and, like, and, what is she supposed to So she just sort of stands yeah. there for about 15 minutes and then holds it back. And then eventually she starts crying. And yeah. the guy is probably sitting in the car wondering, like... Yo, like, like I, I, for the guy, you, it's the worst thing. Are you done? My brother, for, are you finished yet? Please, uh, like, bro. Like, this car, I'm paying for it a per hour, you know? Yeah, like, literally. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but anyway, so that's... So the, the point I'm making is... Whether you have that kind of epic dramatic exit or whether it's more of a, you know, yeah. optimistic culture, the Somali yeah. culture, from what I've heard. It has a big effect on your first night. The, the, the point is whether or not there's going to be some level of anxiety that she's got. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Some level. Either she's just had a hysterical explosion of tears or she's just kind of like, um, I'm a stranger now. Yeah. Like, Do you understand? Literally a stranger. So point right. making, and especially if you've been... Running the whole show in the halal manner, you guys don't know each other. Do you know what I'm saying? Like this will be your first. This, it, it, in theory, yeah, as long as everything is going legit, this will be your first time being alone. You've That's never not, been alone together you, ever. You know like has never happened before. And this is you guys are alone now, now isn't it? So now the beauty, now the, be <clears throat> the, 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 the so the beauty of the hadith of Prophet Islam is teaching us to be tender, to be kind, to be considerate, mm -hmm. come to her with a gift. Prophet Islam came with milk. Come to her with a drink. Maybe give her some milk, give her some juice. You know, maybe maybe at the hotel room. Like, don't make her feel like she's entered a boudoir. Oh wow! Do you understand? Boudoir. A boudoir, like a room for intimacy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, <laughs> make, like, take, pretend like intimacy don't even exist. Hmm. Do you know why? Because you're gonna loose, you're gonna loosen her anxieties. And calm her tension, mm. and then most likely is is going to be comfortable for you mm. to. No, not just that, but I'm saying if you remove that expectation from your mind, you won't face disappointment, and she won't be able to see it on you. Yeah, that's big, man. Because I've probably they probably feel like, wrong disappoint my husband on the first day. First day, I'm already, and, I'm already a failure. And, can I make a suggestion <laughs> that is going to change every man's wedding night from now on? Go on. 
if you do what I'm about to say to you, inshallah, your wedding life is going to be different. That's right. Cries, tears, all that, inshallah. A lot, like, you're going to be able to really enga- um, give, engage with. I'm saying bring her a gift, bring her the milk, do all that. Buy, maybe buy some extra nice little gifts. Maybe do some research, find out things that are really important to her. Shock her, amaze her. Give her like a series of surprise, surprise. Just hand back, she really likes. Maybe give it to her. Maybe speak to her family, something that really means a lot to her. Something very sentimental, maybe something valuable, something that she's always wanted. Have it there hidden, you know, in the hotel room prior or put it out. Give her a gift. Calm her down. Make her happy, feel comfortable. I'm um, safe hands kind of thing, yeah? But then bring something it's going to take this night to the next level. For the man, it's going to be the most excruciating process because he's just thinking, I what is this? Anything. But for the girl, he's going to help calm her down so much and they're going to connect so much and the wedding is going to start with such a bang that, you know, it may even be that they get to, you know, be uh, intimate mm-hmm. in that night, mm-hmm. which is what the guys are going for. And even if they're not, they're going to get emotionally connected okay. and then that will set the pace for because remember the reason I mentioned this is because intimacy is a big portion of marriage but it's built upon a prior connection that comes does that make sense the better that connection is prior then the better you both will be able to enjoy mm. yourselves in that <clears> way does that make sense and sometimes the starting point is the key you know sometimes if you start the wedding night wrong it can lay the seeds for foundations and beliefs and assumptions that take years to get rid of I totally does that make sense understand. it's all based on expectation like I said you know what it is? Go on. what's your is to play face with Chowdy's freshly grounded game. Wow. I'm telling you right now. Wow. Go to the link below right now. Buy that game. That, is that game is all about conversation. And you, she's, she, it's, it's, you're going to be straight. You, you know what it is? Trust me, you're going to struggle with that conversation because you can't think straight. You're just thinking, come on, sister. Mm-hmm. I kept myself pure for but, so many yeah. years. I made, or some guys that like, I made Toba, I came mm-hmm. out mm-hmm. Why are you linking me up? You know what I mean? Yeah. So you're not going to Trust me You're not going to think straight And you know what it is When guys don't have a plan They can come across a bit pushy Which mm-hmm. can make the girl Feel more scared and, You yeah, know what I'm saying Yeah of course so, And the other thing is People don't realise this But when you're in a heightened Sense of emotion Any emotion It's bait to everyone Except you Do you know what I'm Everyone can see What your agenda and, and, is and, Except you That's what I'm saying And she's in a heightened <clears throat> Sense of emotion <clears throat> And so are you Yeah exactly And they're both opposite But this So you will not be able To think straight both of you yeah, And you're both nervous And anxiety And stress And whatever have you so The game will help Open you up To each other That is sick Faceful I love it I'm putting the shift For you right now bro. Yeah that, that's, mad, that's mad plug. That's mad plug Yeah Along verdict So Link below inshallah mm, mm. This ain't not affiliate scheme Just love for your brother Yeah Just got love for your brother You understand people Yeah Support the Muslims out there yeah, well, Support man. the Muslims them Yeah So, <laughs> yeah. so The <clears> first <throat> thing is To come with Come with that softness that tenderness, that, you know, um, th- that safe space. And the Prophet Islam demonstrated it through, given his wife, radiallahu ta'ala, and her gift. Yeah. The second thing to do is um, to place your hand on her head and to make the afa. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, إِذَا تَزَوَّجَ أَحَدُكُمْ إِمْرَأَةً أَوْ إِشْتَرَى خَادِمًا فَلْيَقُلْ If any one of you, he gets married to a woman, then what he should do is he should say, Allahumma inni as'aluka khayraha Oh Allah, I ask you for the good of this woman Wa khayra ma jabaltaha And the good upon which you have created her Wa a'udhu bika min sharriha And I seek refuge in, in you from the evil of this woman Wa min sharri ma jabaltaha alayh And the evil upon which she has been created hmm. Akhi, This is such a profound hadith Another hadith, by the way, mentions فَلْيَأْخُذْ بِنَاصِيَتِهَا وَلْيَقُولْ Put your hand on her forehead mm-hmm. and say, so, and try not to get too excited because this may be the first time you actually touch her. <laughs> so, <laughs> you put your hand on her forehead. It's just, it's just the forehead, my brother. It's just, yeah. just, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, put your, hand, think about that, you're probably yeah, put your hand on the forehead. And maybe we could get Jimmy to put the dua below, uh, translation, transliteration, and the Arabic, of course, um, and read the dua. Does that make sense? Um, well, like, it's shocking uh, a person... Wonders why his marriage is so bad It's so evil There's so much problems Actually, From the beginning These sunnah are here To avoid a lot of corruption and chaos That will come many years down the line You've started your marriage upon Tawheed You've started your relationship upon La ilaha illallah Tawheed you start upon asking Allah To bring you the good in her And upon which she was created And save from the evil of her And the evil that she was created Does that make sense? Well, Akhi, this is going to put so much barak on your marriage of starting your marriage with Allah Azza wa Jal's name at the very beginning. Does that make sense? And uh, a lot of people worry what, you know, like, like you know, 
this is going to decrease the chances of her cheating on you, mm-hmm. chances of having her, an evil w- wife, or her treating mm-hmm. you badly, and you treating her badly, and mm-hmm. there be intentions and problems. Because you didn't leave it with her, you asked Allah to save oh, her. From her. D- yeah. that's, repeat that one more time. It's because you didn't leave it with her, you asked Allah to save, save her. Understand? Yeah. And what do we say at the beginning? Don't forget that all important ayah. Mm-hmm. Allah said, He is the one who places mm-hmm. between them love and uh, mercy. love and mercy. Yeah. So, so from the beginning, you say, Allah, I need this from you now. Mm-hmm. I've married her. I've done it halal. Mm-hmm. But Allah, I'm not alone. I, 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 I cannot do this alone. Mm-hmm. I cannot make this work. Allah, from the very first day, mm-hmm. I need. And every other day, you will make du'a. Mm-hmm. For this relationship mm-hmm. You make the dua Rabbana hablana min azwajina wa dhurriyatina Qurrata a'ayun Wa ja'alna lil muttaqina imama You make that dua every day The dua We can put that below as well Which is the dua you should make For your, for your, for your, for your family Your, your spouse uh, and, and your children uh, your, and, and your offspring You know what I'm saying to, For them to become the coolness of your eyes You make the dua every day But you start it from the first mm-hmm. Does that make sense? This is the difference between a marriage that works And a marriage that gets divorced How many people are following these sunan? How many people are doing these things? Not many. Not many. Does that make sense? Okay. So what now? Do you take it to the bedroom? No? Still not now. Take it easy, my brother. Mm-hmm. Take it easy, tiger. There's still more to do. What do you do? Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhum, what they used to do. It's from the the things that Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhum, they used to do. Okay. And it was narrated uh, from a group from the Sahaba. Qala nafarun min al-Sahaba. فيهم ابن مسعود وابو ذر وحذيفه يغلام رضي الله تعالى عنهم they used to say okay ابن 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 مسعود ابو ذر ان حذيفه رضي الله تعالى عنهم اذا دخل عليك اهلك فصلي ركعتين if you come to your wife on the wedding night then you pray to raka okay you pray to raka you pray to raka of salah Okay, another narration Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala anhu He said فَإِذَا أَتَتْكَ فَمُرْحَ أَن تُصَلِّيَ وَرَاءَكَ رَكَعَتَيْنَ He said if you come uh, to your wife on the wedding night What you do is you say to her, you, you command, you say pray to raka'a with me You pray to raka'a of salah with me Does that make sense? The salah is what? Is a act of worship Linguistically, it comes from the word sila. Mm. Diff- different roots that scholars mention when they say sila. Mm. Okay, sila means connection. So salah is a act of worship. It's a dua, which what it means dua. It means sila means connection. Mm-hmm. Um, ittisal. Does that make sense? Like you know, ittisalat. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. connections, yeah. connection yeah. Uh, network. Yeah, so, mobile network here yeah, in the Middle East. Mm. So there's ittisal. It's mm. a it's a connection. So salah comes from that, right? It's one, it's one of the things that the scholars mentioned, one of the means that it revolves around. So now pay attention. Salah connects you to your to your Lord. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? Now we've discussed in previous episodes that the rights of your spouses are connected to the rights of Allah subhanahu wa Allah. Mm-hmm. So look how beautiful this is. On the wedding night you come, the first thing that you do, but you make her feel comfortable. You make the afra. Okay, you don't go to the bed yet. Mm-hmm. You don't rush to the bed like. mm-hmm. okay, put, put your hormones and all that to a side okay, this, is, this, is, this is the way Allah Slaves of Allah They start yeah. their relationship yeah. They realize now Okay now it's not me It's two of us And we've got rights over each other And we need to be connected to each other And fulfill each other's rights But you will not be connected to each other You will always be disconnected So long as you are not connected to Allah mm-hmm. so, to, to, so together What's the first thing that you do? You connect to Allah together yeah. You connect to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala together for salah. Mm-hmm. And you don't connect individually You connect together mm-hmm. Do you understand? That's mad that's and crazy, then, yeah. then you come to the bed. Mm-hmm. Then you connect with each other. Jonas, look how beautiful. That's crazy, is. man. Yeah, how beautiful that's proper it is. Nice, man. First, you two are nicely mm-hmm. soft. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Then you make dua. Yeah. For for Allah to give the good. Then you pray salah, connect with each other to Allah, and now that you're connected to Allah through salah with each other. Yeah. Now you connect with each other. Now you take it to the bed. That's mad. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, of course, it doesn't have to be mechanical. Step one, gift. Step two, <laughs> da'a. Step Babes, two. we've got a checklist. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Just, but my point, we've got my timing point, my point to meet. Okay, when my watch this, beeps, that's when we go to the next one. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So between this, keep it very natural. Hmm. You know, bring in the cards again. Mm-hmm. Maybe crack a joke. Mm-hmm. I'm saying plan. A lot of people don't <clears> plan. Like I said, <throat> you know how we said in the previous, one previous episode, when you go to a marriage meeting, plan. Ford. Remember we said how to have a discussion. Mm-hmm. Uh, Ford is what? Um, I forgot what Ford was 
O is for occupation, R is for recreation, and D is for dreams. F- family, sorry. Okay. Those are the, those are the uh, conversation starters, right? Mm-hmm. That's family, occupation, recreation. What do you do for fun? Dreams. What are your dreams? Your ambitions. Mm. So that's a plan for a marriage meeting. So now you go to a marriage meeting, and you have a plan. Yeah. So have a plan for the night. I was going to say success is where up. preparation meets opportunity. You have pre- you have opportunity. You need preparation, exactly. and you will be successful. Exactly. So you have to have a plan. You know what I'm saying? Like have a, have a bag of tricks for the night. Yeah. Not, not not magic tricks. Yeah. But what I mean is, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> don't do stand up magic yeah. for a while. Yeah, no, no, no magic, no magic, no magic. But what I mean is, what I, sorry, that was a bad way to express it. Sorry. What I mean is, have have a bag of. Things that mm. ha, like make sure the night don't get boring. And trust mm. me, but I promise you, you have to have plan A, B, all the way up to Z. Do you understand? Yeah. And most likely, what will happen is most likely, Aki, it will naturally like she'll feel so comfortable. It will just lead to intimacy. Yeah. Bro. It will just lead to intimacy. You're making the best friend tonight, bro. Do you understand? Yeah. Now, hey, let me tell you something. If you don't lead to intimacy, is there a problem there? No. It's not too bad. Have you lost out on something? Do, do you know, but basically, what is what is mentioned is that if you marry a virgin, the what's recommended is that you 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 spend seven nights with her mm. consecutively. Does mm. that make sense? Um, is in like quality time style, like you yeah, guys but, don't and go like, out. but like for example, oh, okay. you, you know, yeah, you, you kind of abandon work now. I don't know if a guy's what work, the point is, the point is, you just focus for these seven nights yeah. on her, yeah, you know, you just focus on these seven nights for her. Does mm-hmm. that make sense? So if it doesn't happen the first, it can happen second, third, fourth. I mean, mm-hmm. you've got some time, does that make mm-hmm. sense? You know, a lot of the time, especially if it's a virgin girl, the first time you even try to enter, mm-hmm. you know, the 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 the, the very uh, the, the the very tight, does that make mm-hmm. sense? So, um. That is, it, it's not easy And it can cause a lot of pain mm-hmm. So it may even be That a person doesn't actually Manage to enter into A completely the first time mm-hmm. And that's totally normal Does mm-hmm. that make sense mm-hmm. So it may take up to the second Maybe even the third try Because you don't want to be uh, uh, Inconsiderate and insensitive About it At the point where you cause her pain You know yeah. what I'm saying um, And remember there's always Things you could do prior You know foreplay Which is just you know like one One can kiss One can embrace One can do things That are a bit more Less but the very quickly paved the way for that which is to come does that make sense so that's all part part and parcel of it so so seven you've got seven days to make it happen trust me i can most likely it'll probably happen by the second night if not the first. <clears> if, you, you, if you do it i'm you, telling you yeah. it'll probably happen by the first no, i'm saying that um this this uh not expectation but this like part of, of marriage this uh intimate part is not just on your mind she's probably had it on her mind for a long time as well i mean it's, yeah. it's not something that you know, you are alone. In, it's not like you're trying to make a sale here, you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this person's already here. She, with she, you, yeah, know? she knows. Yeah, yeah you know exactly. what I'm saying? So then, okay, now, so you're you're about to, you've done your salah and, you mm-hmm. know, that's it. You know, you're with each other now and perhaps there's some romance and some embracing that's taking place or whatever have you. And Sparks. Yeah, and, mm-hmm. and, and it seems that now the progressive stage is that intimacy is not far, yeah? So when, before you engage in intimacy, and before you enter, you must make the du'a of intercourse. Mm-hmm. Look at this. Look at the religion. Or like every step of the way, Akhi, even inside of your 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 intimate relations, tawheed is ever present. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. La ilaha illallah. Allah, he is present. How is it present? How is tawheed present? How is it? Because you're asking him mm-hmm. every step of the way. A du'a hu al-ibadah. Du'a is ibadah. La ilaha illallah. La ma'abudah bihaqqin illallah. There's no one worthy to worship the truth except for Allah. Mm-hmm. Worship And then dua is worship The Prophet ﷺ said Bahi. So now you're worshipping Allah And you're asking him For the good of her You're praying to Allah Before you even enter You're making dua What's the dua? Mm-hmm. Allahumma jannibna shaytan mm-hmm. Oh Allah Keep us and shaytan On two different sides Wa jannib shaytana Mimma razaqtana And also keep shaytan away From Anything that you give us from this Meaning if you give us a child From this me, mm-hmm. my wife, and the mm-hmm. child or children that you give to mm-hmm. us from this, mm-hmm. keep us on one side and keep shaitan on the other side. Right, so, yeah. Many people wonder why they have children. The children turn out to be evil. We ask them, did you make this dua mm-hmm. the time you had intercourse? We mm-hmm. ask Allah to save and protect our children from mm-hmm. evil. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. So again, you make dua. Mujahid ibn Jabir ta'ala said that why are you being told to make d- to seek refuge in Allah from shaitan at the time of intimacy, he said it indicates that shaitan is present at the time you do intimacy. Mm. Because remember, shaitan is a bit of a filthy person, isn't mm-hmm. it? He's a bit of a filthy person, so uh, a filthy being. Quite so, you know, mm. people who are filthy, they like to be like peeping toms. <laughs> That's who peeping toms they like to look at haram, they like to look at filth, look at the porn industry. So, shaitan likes to, he, he, he took from this that shaitan is present. Mm. He likes to be present when a man and a woman are engaging each other in intimacy. Mm. And when they're engaging in intimacy, 
he doesn't just like to look sometimes he might even try to get involved mm. does that make sense mm. and imagine you know you're there with your spouse but shaitan is also trying to enter your spouse or do things to your spouse at a time so you're seeking refuge in Allah from this does that make sense yeah what's also very scary by the way is that if you do it as a married couple shaitan could be there what if you're doing it and you're not even married you're doing zina yeah then he's definitely there yeah. well, well not just that he's definitely there but mm. how can you even seek refuge mm. so, yeah. I, 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 I can't say he's definitely there but yeah. chance of being there mm. but you can't even seek refuge mm. and now not only that when you do zina the prophet said your iman comes out of your yeah your body yeah. your body yeah. so now your iman which is a protection mm -hmm. is hovering over you yeah and you cannot even seek refuge in Allah from yeah. the evil that you're about to do. Because yeah, we mentioned evil, this is one of the opportunities that dons get possessed, don't yeah, it? Yeah, the jinn enters inside you now. Mm. Shaitan enters inside you. It's not there to protect you. Do you understand? Oh, yeah, yeah. So that's how you get possessed a lot of people. Mm. A lot of people, you know what I'm saying? So anyway, come back to the thing now. So look at that. Now, that ha what happens is, you've made the dua. Uh, you can have intimacy, inshallah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um, that's just, powerful. Shall I tell you why yeah. I, I really like it? Yeah? Is because it's a reminder. Like this... Uh, da'a in and of itself is like its existence is a reminder to you that even in your deepest desires like at the height of your emotion there is discipline there still Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reigns supreme above everything All else things. as in no matter how deeply how badly you want something Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala always comes first. Always. And that, that's a that's a deep if you if, if you make it clear, like, I mean, uh maybe 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 your wife probably know it more than you or whatever. It's maybe the other person who, who who knows less than you uh will be reminded that oh wait, actually you're right. This yeah. marriage is not just we don't just like it's not just one of those, it's just us two. No, there's someone above us, which is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yeah, and, and you know what it is? It's all about foundations, isn't it? Yeah. The building starts strong, everything will be good. And yeah. imagine how you're starting your wedding. Yeah, exactly. Him. I also must mention here some of the virtues of intimacy. Mm -hmm. There's a hadith um, where the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, mm. And to understand what the Prophet said, you have to go to the question the companions asked. They said, Ayati ahaduna shahwatahu wa yakunu lahu fiha ajar. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was asked by his companions If one of us comes with his desires to fulfill his desire In other words, we come to have intercourse with our wife Is there a reward for us? Are we going to be rewarded? Is that what you're telling us on Messenger of Allah? That we're going to be rewarded yeah. for this? Yeah. That I get rewarded for carrying out my intimate desires? Mm -hmm. The Prophet said أَرَأَيْتُمْ لَوْ وَضَعَهَا فِي حَرَامٍ أَكَانَ عَلَيْهِ فِيهِ وزر. The Prophet وسلم, said, had the man done intercourse with this woman outside of marriage, i.e. in haram, would he have gotten sin for it? Mm. Would he have gotten sin for it? Yeah. He would have, right? فَكَذَلِكَ إِذَا وَضَعَهَا فِي الْحَلَالِ كَانَ لَهُ أَجَرَ Like that, if he does it in marriage, in halal, mm -hmm. he gets rewarded for it now. Mm. This thing, if you were doing it outside of marriage, mm -hmm. You would have been sinful. Sinful. That same thing for which you have been sinful, you're doing it inside marriage. Mm -hmm. Every time you get rewarded. Scholars differ. Do you get rewarded only if you have an intention, like mm -hmm. a religious intention at the time of intimacy? Mm -hmm. What seems apparent, Wallahu Alam Alam from the Aqal of the Ulama, the strongest view, Wallahu Alam is that from the apparent of the narration is that even if you don't have any intention, mm -hmm. you get rewarded. Mm. But if you have an intention, the reward is greater. Mm -hmm. So I want to bring to you the kalam of Imam Al Nawi, rahmahullah taala, Muhyiddin Yahya ibn Sharaf Al Nawi Al Shafi'i, rahmahullah taala. He said, "Fal Jima." No, it's like he mentioned that Shafi'i, but yeah. He said, "Fal Jima." He said, "Intercourse." Yakunu ibadatan ida nawabihi qada haqi al zawja. He said, "Look at this." Intercourse Like intimacy That thing which is just It's just pleasure for a man And it's just pleasure for a wife It's just pleasure It's just It's just joy mm -hmm. it's, you know, Salah You're has, just trying to enjoy it I'm, I'm saying Salah mm -hmm. has joy But mm -hmm. there's a degree of You know it, There can be difficulty in Salah mm -hmm. You know you're, you're tired You're You know You're going along You're me reading along Surah You know I'm saying like There's this is just pure joy. In sadaqah, there's joy, but there's you know, parting with something. There's there's a form of difficulty in the sense where there's a sacrifice. There's a form of sabr, I should say. Sabr is better. There's a, there's a sabr. This 
it's not sabar, it's just enjoyment. Mm-hmm. It's just ladda. Mm-hmm. It's just ladda. But look what he says. It's just it's just enjoyment. He said, فَالْجِمَاعُ intercourse يَكُونُ عِبَادَةً It becomes worship. إِذَا نَوَى قَضَاءَ حَقِّ زَوْجَةً He said, it becomes an act of worship the moment you intend that I'm going to fulfill the right of my wife. Mm-hmm. As this is a right that Allah gave her. So the moment you intend that I'm going to fulfill her right, now all of that, the foreplay and the intercourse, the penetration, everything, the climaxing, the ejaculation, that whole thing that is just pleasure to you is ibadah. The reason I just painted a picture when I mentioned a few specific things is not because I'm trying to just be over explicit, but hopefully you can see I'm really trying to watch my words and be as respectful as possible. Is I just want that shock factor for you to see how merciful Allah is mm. that He made something which is just utter joy yeah. in terms of. What it is Imagine someone goes up to you And tells you Listen you know Eating pizza and chocolate Is healthy And you're there like Huh What do you, do you Imagine Whoa, What yeah. I, I can eat I can eat chocolate I can eat, I can eat ice cream And it's good for me It's like that So so, so then intimacy Is not just healthy for the body It's mm. also healthy for the soul mm. Healthy for your heart It's healthy for your deed Because mm-hmm. you get rewarded Every time you do it Yeah Does that make sense So he said it becomes It becomes an act of worship The moment you intend To fill the rights of your wife uh, And also if you intend to live with her in good, if you intend that, I'm just trying to be nice to my wife. Mm-hmm. I'm just trying to be nice to her. Yeah. Because uh, Allah said, وَعَشِرُهُنَّ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ Does that make sense? Uh, then you're, you know, الَّذِي أَمَرَهُ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى بِهِ Then Allah Azza wa Jalla will give you more reward. أَوْ طَلَبَ وَلَدٍ Or you you you, you want a, a waladin, salih, you want a righteous child, you're having intimacy because you want a child to come from this. Okay? أَوْ إِعْفَافَ نَفْسِهِ أَوْ إِعْفَافَ الزَّوْجَةِ or you're doing it so you can protect yourself from falling into haram outside. You're having intercourse with her, you know, so you don't end up doing it on the streets. You know, maybe you saw something, you desire kind of, so you came back home, you didn't want to do anything haram, so you had intercourse with your spouse, or you have intercourse with her so that she, her gaze is lowered and so she didn't have to look for it also in haram. You know, any of these things, yeah? وَمَنَعْهُمَا جَمِيعًا مِنَ النَّظْرِ إِلَى حَرَامِ أَوْ الْفِكْرِ فِيهِ or you're doing it to, you know, make each other lower each other's gaze and not think about doing haram elsewhere. Basically, you, you're, you're, you're doing intercourse because you want to fulfill their rights. You want to have a righteous child. You want to live in your wife and good. You, so you don't end up doing haram outside elsewhere so you can lower each other's gazes. Uh, and so you don't desire anyone else or anything else outside. He said, ذَلِكَ مِنَ الْمَقَاصِدِ الصَّالِحَةِ These are all from the great, uh, from, from the, from the intended objectives and intentions that are that are that are that there are some righteous things that are that are intended outcomes objectives that you want from intimacy and these are all salih righteous meaning if you have any of these intentions <clears throat> you're going to get rewarded inshallah so and, and, and remember right sheikh ibrahim uh so the point is any of these intentions you have bro your intimacy is a reward for you mm. so look how beautiful that is and and why why I mention this again because I know a lot of people are watching this and they're single right now. Okay, this is for the ones who are patient. Mm. You know what I'm saying like you 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 do this in haram before marriage, the maji you know uh, or maji at <laughs> like bro this is this is one of the major sins bro. You know what I'm saying major major dirty filthy sin You know what I'm saying but bro like you do it. Uh, because of your patience that you showed and your obedience to Allah, and now it's just reward for you, bro. Like, like intercourse is not a bad thing in Islam. No, it's a good thing. You know what I'm saying. Yeah. So I think we have uh, there's a, because because intimacy is such a central part of marriage. You know, there's a lot of things I want to do, which is ahkam of intimacy, the do's and don'ts, the general do's and don'ts, the contemporary do's and don'ts, the classical do's and don'ts. Uh, you know, uh, tahara and whatnot. You know, yeah, yeah. Like it's a big thing, and I'm saying so. We'll talk about all that stuff, but hopefully, this was of benefit for people. Mm-hmm. And I'm saying, take it slow as well, so be gentle. I'm saying, uh, it's her first time, it's your first time, be gentle for her so that it doesn't cause her too much problem, and you take it easy for yourself so that you don't um, run out of steam too quick. 
No, not just that, but I would say like set realistic standards and yeah. realistic expectations just for yourself, not even on other people. Other people is obviously. You know, the, one thing I think is different. I'm saying just expect from yourself a realistic level. You it? know, one thing I would like to do, which I didn't get to do, and I don't think it would be good to go into it now because it's been a bit stretched, but to discuss the just advice for men on how to kind of have good manners and good conduct in intimacy with their spouse. There's a lot about it. Like the, guy, the Prophet <laughs> gave a lot of guidance on this. You know what I'm saying? Can we just, I want to address guidance. something real quick. Yeah, yes. You know, people people are quick to say stuff like, uh, you know, uh, another episode from Dawah Man about flipping uh, sexual relations. Um, you know, it's really important. There's a reason, you know, like we call it, uh, in school they call it sex education. Mm. As in sex ed, right? I don't think sex ed is bad in its essence. I think it's really important. I mean, if you don't hear... Uh, okay, just I challenge you, commenter. Tell me, if you didn't hear about it here, did you hear about it from any other like Muslim-oriented place where they tell you about ahkam, things that you have to remember with regards to Allah SWT and stuff like that? I'm su- I'm assuming it's probably just heard of in pop culture, uh, year five, um, secondary, secondary school and those places. But obviously that's not that's not for us. I think I think we should have a more obviously not a lewd one, not an explicit one where we're just being you know uh, unnecessary with each other, but a, a real conversation about sexual edu- sexual education is very important, and our community is not having it. I mean, so I mean, if anything, you lot should be figuring out ways that we can have this conversation in a very mature, reasonable manner. I don't have any. I don't. I don't really think you know, that the thing is, there's those a kind lot of things should be pushed. There's a lot of. I don't really want to use the term sex ed, but that kind of yeah. topic. There's a lot of that kind of education. Surah Al Ahzab. Mm. Surah to Noor, mm. Surah to Yusuf. As in things you need to know, because it's a big part of everyone's life. You, yeah. I mean, I, the <sighs> fact that it is, I mean, look, the fact that because you you won't even know, you won't even know because no one talks to you. I know at least in Pakistani culture, yeah. it's never. I mean, maybe you can correct me, but it's never discussed bro, ever. Bro, no one ever talks about this, bro. and then afterwards, all of a sudden, this happens, that happens. You don't even know. But you're doing shall, haram. Shall, shall I tell you something? Shall I tell you? It's the elephant in the room that no one talks about, or no one wants to talk about. In the Islamic way They want to talk about it But mm. not in the Islamic way mm. um, But they don't mm-hmm. One of the things that it Shows how big of an elephant In the room it is Is number one It's the fundamental It's one of the It's one of the primary Fundamental reasons Why marriages break down Yeah Trust mm. me it's, Things are bad in the bedroom I can only imagine yeah. um, As in so, so try and think of in your mind Like all of the couples You worked yeah. with Etc If you were to give a proportion I know it's quite difficult yeah. But I'm saying If you were to give a proportion What kind of proportions <laughs> Would you expect Most like over fifty percent. Yeah, most 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 wow. couples have in, intimate intimacy issues, and mm. and and sometimes they even if they don't realize intimacy issue, when you go deep, it is you'll find out. Issue. Issue. Oh, okay. and if they, usually, if they can solve things in the bedroom, they can solve things outside the bedroom. Mm. Do you understand? Yeah. Because a lot of it comes down to there are problems, but you're not feeling each other's right. Hey, that's a different episode. The point is that it's a it's a primary issue. Mm. Yeah, where marriages break down. Number two. Prostitution is one of the oldest pr- professions. I don't even want to call it profession, but well, yeah, billah, oldest industries. It's yeah. one of the oldest industries. Yeah, mm. pornography today is the, rampant. It's huge. It's, it's, it's absolutely it's bigger, massive. It's bigger than the Android inter- in phone industry. Yeah, it's bigger than the, the tech. And it's, it's bigger than it's bigger than Microsoft, yeah. Apple, Samsung all put together. Mm. Well, yeah, billah. Yeah. And it's the thing that your children are suffering from. It's yeah. the biggest thing in my emails. And that's why I talk about it yeah. a lot, unfortunately, due to the yeah. To be honest, at times I think I don't talk about it enough. But no, that's what I'm saying. I, I mean, I really don't have an issue. I, I think it's quite important. It needs mm. to be discussed. It's like if if we don't talk, obviously, if we don't talk about it, I'm not saying who's going to, but I'm saying unless unless that unless our community finds a a way to discuss these topics in an impactful way. We're just gonna have to keep going with it, yeah. Uh, I think you know, race goals is taking a positive direction. Yeah, inshallah. Hopefully. Alhamdulillah, we ha- I had those two sessions that I did for the kids. One for the boys is called sex education for boys. One mm. for sex education for girls. It seems to go really well. Alhamdulillah. Mm-hmm. I'm just looking at it. Yeah, sex education for boys is one of the most viewed videos viewed vid- videos on my channel. Mm. Yeah, exactly. I know a lot of parents sat their kids down and said, "Yo, watch it." Hopefully, yeah, inshallah. Definitely. And the girls on as yeah. well. You know what I'm saying, but anyway, I think. Uh, Inshallah, so you can have that wedding night and you can play the freshly ground <laughs> cards. Uh, you need two things you need a girl or a guy for your wedding night, and you need the freshly ground cards, yeah. So, 
Click the link below in the description and get the freshly grounded cards mm. and also sign up to the match. Yeah, that's why. <laughs> sign up to the match. Yeah. There can be no first night unless you have that first marriage meeting. How you can have that first marriage meeting? Sunnah match, inshallah. Find the right one, the right way. Link in the description. Barakalafiq. I'm happy, man. This is a good episode. It's good episode. Yeah. Huh? Yeah, I think we discussed a lot. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Subhanak Allahumma bihamdik ashadi man la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilaik. Assalamu alaikum. We want many things in life, but one thing that summarizes all that we want is we want good. We want goodness. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran how we can all acquire goodness. Primarily in the next life, which is what really counts, right? Because what point is there if you had so much good in this world, but in the next life, you are a loser? In Surah Ali Imran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, لَن تَنَالُوا الْبِرِّ حَتَّى تُنْفِقُوا مِمَّا تُحِبُّونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, you will never, you will not reach goodness. You will never acquire it until you spend for the sake of Allah out of that which you love. When this ayah came down, there was a companion of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa who owned a beautiful garden. And it was very beloved to this companion. The moment he heard this ayah, he wanted to implement it straight away because although he had a beautiful, lovely garden, he knew that there was a greater good, which was the garden in the next life, the garden of Jannah that he wants. So he came to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he gave it in the cause of Allah. Like if you deep it for a second, when you love something, you spend money on it. You love your children, you spend money on your children. You love yourself, you spend money on yourself. But you're supposed to love Allah and Islam more than all of these things. How much have you spent in Allah's cause. The Prophet ﷺ had companions there that were willing at the drop of a hat to fund whatever cause it was that was needed to be funded for the sake of Allah. And we today, in similar fashion, are reaching out to you. If we can get a hundred people to give 50 pounds at the link below, you can help us in getting closer to our next target. And if you can't give 50, give 50p. Remember what the, Allah said in the ayah. وَمَا تُنْفِقُوا مِنْ خَيْرٍ فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ بِهِ عَلِيمٌ Whatever you give from good, Allah knows. You may give 50 pound. You may give 50, you may give 50p. You may give 5p. But that could be the reason for you to enter paradise. With that said, please click the link below. And we're going to carry on doing what we do. But we need you, with Allah's permission, to do what you need to do. That's to support the cause of Allah. Assalamu alaikum. Peace.